I'm joined uh, today with Mike. Mike uh, works with uh, Baptist Together. Uh, Mike, do you want to explain a little bit about your role? So uh, currently I'm the communications manager for the Baptist Union. I belong to the Faith and Society Specialist team. Uh, we work out of Didcot um, in South Oxfordshire. Uh, I'm a Baptist minister myself and um, came into this role sort of four years ago now, but up until fairly recently, I was a communications enabler, which was a broader title, which was looking at um, yeah, breaking and making connections um, sort of across the union, which um, included the, the national communications. That's fantastic. And I know as a minister and regional minister that you're pumping out loads of resources, especially at this time. Can I ask why you chose to step away from uh, everyday pastoral ministry into a communication role? That's a really good question, actually, because there's, there's testimony and call within that uh, answer. Yeah, I am very much built as an on the ground missional person. Um, so when this came in, my, my background prior to going into ministry was um, in communication. I've been to art college and I've been a designer and those sorts of things. Um, this particular role was looking to combine uh, ministerial experience with an understanding of communications, marketing, design, that sort of things. So there's not that many of us out there, but when I certainly saw the advert, I felt that um, God immediately pointed his finger and went, I've got this plan for you. Um, and I went kicking and screaming into it. I've always called it my, my Jonah calling, really. I, I really didn't want to go. Um, partly because, yeah, yeah, I'm far more of a people on the ground working with a, a church and, and the wider community to try and make sort of God's kingdom come. Um, so to step away from that was a really difficult thing to do and still is. I, I still call it my Jonah calling. I am um, I'm quite honest in the fact that um, this is this is part of my uh, a challenging time of my discipleship because uh, yeah it isn't something I'm energized by. It's not something I would choose to do. Um, but nevertheless, the call is there and remains there. And that's what gives me the, um, the reason to get up and, and carry on doing it. That's brilliant. So what does it mean to, to kind of uh, do all the communication and marketing for Baptist Together? One of the challenges that we do have as Baptists is that we are effectively um, around, you know, around about, it's about 1900 churches now across the union. Um, and clearly we all work very individually, we are very local, we're very contextual, um, but we're also part of this bigger thing, which is not only there to support each other, but also to try and make God's bigger plans for the nation and the world to happen. And part of the role really is about trying to help people um, understand what's going on around the country, the other things that they are part of and they belong to, um, that they can be energised and infused by. Um, and it's, it's, it's the difficult way of actually getting in front of each church and helping them understand that they are part of this bigger thing because we're so local in how we um, yeah, operate as Baptists. That's brilliant. And how do you see God moving and working within your role? Um, within the sort of role, me personally, I'm certainly a blessing that I've always had, despite the fact that I'm not there in a local church setting anymore. It is the blessing of meeting people across the country um, of where, and then you sort of recognise just the breadth in the spectrum of the way in which God works within different people and within different contexts. Um, and I have met more people um, in these last few years than if, if I'd have had 40 years in local ministry, um, I wouldn't have met half the number of people that I have done already. And I've now got significant friendships and relationships that, that will last you know, for the time of which I'm sort of called into ministry. And that's it. And that's from seeing the, the, the great local church stories. For example, one that we're working on right now is from a Filipino church up in Newcastle, who I, who I know well. Um, they're mainly NHS workers and care workers. Um, and so they've got a whole load of stories that they're telling about their experiences of life over the last couple of months. And one of them has been one of the um, nurses that has been painted by a whole group of artists across the country who are trying to document um, this time that we're going through right now. So that's sort of one story. 
Um, this Sunday evening, we're doing our national prayer broadcast again, and we've got Roy Searle coming on. Roy Searle is well known sort of across Baptist world, not only for his work with the Northumbria community, but is also our new pioneer ambassador as well. And th those are just sort of two examples of where very local to somebody very national profile, and, and that's a real blessing. Brilliant. And obviously, in your adventures of going to different churches, what are you seeing the different churches doing in, in mission around the country? I mean, there, there are so many. Um, and for anybody looking at this uh, video now, do go on to um, particularly the Baptist Times area of the website because there are so many local, regional and national stories that, that, that are happening. Um, and that is very um, inspiring um, and interest just for just from really small things but e things that people can easily do um, are for example this week one a uh, small church in south london um, where well in, at christmas they did a recycled nativity scene uh, so that the whole community could see the story of christmas and but they did it out of recycling to make a connection in with env environmentalism at the moment, they've recreated the line, the witch in the wardrobe, to say that we're, we're in the grip of winter, but spring will come. Um, and so the minister there did ask me to send to do some snowflakes. So um, with my CYF hat on, my children, young people and families hat, yes, I, I, I sent them some snowflakes, which will go in the window um, of, the, of the church. Um, and that's it's just those little connections to the very significant um, examples with with food banks and working in community to things where they're trying to really champion um, the, the the Matthew 25s of the society those that are very much the, the least of these um, and it is it's seeing from from very local church initiatives to um, yeah, food banks to hospital chaplains military chaplains um, yeah yeah i mean that's it the list goes on and on um of the things that are happening and going back to the my previous answer it the the challenge with this role is actually trying to help people navigate these stories and to hear them brilliant and how would you uh, define mission if you had to um i think for me I, i'm very much a yeah, to use a theological term, realised eschatological person where I'm seeing very much Jesus coming again right now about making the kingdom, about really following through on the Lord's Prayer, about making it on earth as it is in heaven right now. And for me, that, that is mission. It's when you can look at a space, and even if it is just a few minutes, you can see there's no difference here between here and heaven, where that to, to use a, a you know the, the Celtic phrase of a of a, of a thin place um, to say well in fact there's no difference going on here we have achieved a moment of the kingdom of course we're still in a fallen time so those times move on but um, for me mission is about making it on earth as it is in heaven brilliant and how how do you interpret your role as missional um, and that's something I've wrestled with, certainly personally, because, um, yes, in reality, uh, my metaphor I've often used is that, uh, yeah, when you're, when you're a local minister, you're very much on the ground. But as soon as you go into a national role, um, you, you feel like you're in a jumbo jet. You can see lots, but you're a long way from talking to somebody on the ground. Um, so it's about how we effectively yeah, tell those stories, connect in. And I suppose it's ultimately part of my role is about trying to make people feel that they are part of God's bigger plans and kingdom um, and to make these things yeah on earth as it is in heaven yeah from a wider perspective and I've often said to people that perhaps the greatest kingdom legacy any of us will do is is making uh, those regular contributions to home mission to um, making um, a connection with a church in the other part of the country of offering a story which somebody else may pick up and you never may never hear about i think it's being part of this bigger network of christians this bigger expression of, uh, of god's spirit at work and yeah people realizing that yeah yeah god's god god works in and I, I suppose it almost like an onion skin there's different layers to it um and for us to be able to be realized that as Baptist churches that we are part of that thing and my role I think is the missional element is yeah yeah for people to feel and know that they are part of this bigger expression of God's work. Wow that's 
fantastic. And for us at this time, we're, we're recording this while we're still socially distancing. We're, we're praying and hoping for the day soon uh, when we're not. Uh, so you're busy about providing so much for the churches and communication. I wondered, where are you seeing joy and light and hope at the moment? Um, I think part of the things that have been joyful to see sort of out there is has been the, the, the speed in which churches have been willing to try things. Um, uh, and that's been, I think that it's part of the ongoing reflection that we'll all need to do is that when something has been forced upon us and we have to be creative and inventive and, and put things down or try things that we otherwise would go or oh, step back away from that. Um, and it has been great to see so many churches, yes, engaged now in the, in the digital world, um, it, far more so than they were before. Um, it's worth mentioning that uh, as a union, one of our key priorities as a Baptist family is engaging with the digital revolution. Um, and we, this has been in place now for well over a year as a priority brought before it's, uh, by Baptist Union Council. And, and this has been a key moment for that priority really of how we all engage with that across the ages. Um, and I think yes, the challenge for churches and, and yes, a, a challenge for any church watching this back now is not to suddenly drop the things that they've been doing so far but engage with it work with it weave it into the, the tapestry of the way in which god's at work within your own community and think yeah in what way can this be mission or what way can this be kingdom orientated going forward um i was speaking with a minister earlier on today um who who was saying that yeah people that were in care homes um people that were unable to get to the church normally but have actually had embraced the technology, had got an iPad or something, we're now really lapping up the church services and the things that the church, and for the first time in years, they were feeling connected. And I think there's a great deal of work to be done um, with uh, churches reflecting on that and thinking, yeah, how can we use the technology for very much pastoral care, for connecting, um, and yeah, yeah, for some exciting things um, as well. Brilliant. Anyway, that, part, that partly answered your question, but um, yeah, yeah, there's lo loads of good things going on. No, no, that's fantastic. And uh, I wonder if you could give us all a bit of advice on actually how do we, what would be our priorities for local churches in maintaining that online presence and being part of that uh, digital revolution? I think one of those things, it is, it's, it's sort of prayerful, for reflection really which i think can can begin now clearly we're, we're still in lockdown as we speak at the moment but in the coming weeks certain things will be relaxed uh, i think it'll be quite a long time before we're, we're sharing the hand of fellowship during communion within the churches um but nevertheless i think that the prayerful conversation can begin now within each individual fellowship of saying you know what have we seen what have we listened to um to have a almost in some way and it's difficult to do when you're in the thick of it but what can you step back from and and listen to the way in which uh, god's speaking um, at the moment and how is he speaking to you and your local community and and to use that this space now to um to do that so that when things start to come back to normal and it will be dead easy to fall back into the busyness of of normal life um to make sure that um, these new shoots have been nurtured well and they don't just get sort of trampled on um, when life life returns um, so yeah start the prayerful conversations now and think what can we keep what can we develop what can we build upon in now that um, yes we might have spent some time engaging digitally and, and not only digitally but I'm, I'm fully aware that for, the, for those that aren't digital there's been that whole thing of um, yeah, technology poverty in some spaces, but also those that are unable to access it. What are the ways in which you've engaged with that and what needs to continue with that? Um, and then it forms part of your overall missional um, strategy and thinking going forward. Um, so that even when in a few months time life may be, you know, 70, 80% back to normal, um, I think God's used this moment to, to, to shake the church, really. Um, and let him shake you now um and um as we read in the bible wrestling with god is a great thing to do um one, one of the real blessings we've had whilst we've been off and people watching this can go to our youtube channel to see this is that 
um, Reverend Dr. Helen Painter, one of the tutors at Bristol Baptist College, is doing a tour of the Bible. She's talking every day um, about each book of the Bible. Um, and as she spoke about the, um, the other day that Israel literally means the Hebrew translation is wrestling with God. Um, and it's that call that we're all called, not just academics and ministers, we're all called to wrestle with God. So his, his, his invitation now is to sort of go wrestle with him um, and see what he says. It might be painful as we read in the Bible, but let, let, let's, uh, let that blessing sink in and um, let's see what emerges. Brilliant. So what, as you've shared uh, a little about the challenges of, of communication within the church, but what, what are the challenges you face on a day-to-day -day basis within your role? Um, I think day-to-day, -day, the, the difficulty we have is, is connecting directly with um, local church members and ordinary uh, members of the sort of church community. Um, we, we do have a database, but it is very much just sort of the ministers, church secretaries and treasurers, which, yes, makes up around about six or seven thousand people. But we know that there's probably, you know, a good 150 or thousand people at least very, very directly involved, if not church members across our union, which means we can only ever get in touch with a tiny percentage of those that um, go to our churches. So the challenge is how do we make the sort of strategic connections um, to those that are actually on the ground and uh, we've got access and can send things to the gatekeepers within churches but we we also need to be able to um, contact more people who are just ordinary churchgoers or are involved with the community and to realize that that particular church is part of something bigger um, which that that's the biggest challenge and I suppose within thinking of those challenges uh, and everything else that you've shared, how can we as an association here in South Wales and as individual churches uh, support you? I think it's it's when um, yeah, communications come in, in what a form, clearly they're very all very digital at the moment, um, is, to, is to have a look through them. It's not about reading every single thing, but do share them within the church, share them on the church notices. Even if it is just to say, even if it's just to point it to some of the stories on the website um, or the website itself. Um, things like the uh, current magazine we've just sent out digitally. Normally that would be sent out in printer form, but we've sent it out digitally. But do, do have a, a chance to look through some of those stories and, and read them. Um, we do spend a lot of time and try and get the right people to write really good things for these things. And we know that there is a lot of information and stories out there, but yeah, yeah, spend some time having a look at what um, we have available. Um, and when we do come back to uh, yeah, having a printed magazine, every church um, gets uh, three copies. And um, often, often we found in the previous years is that they'll, they'll sort of get thrown at the back on the back table, if we're lucky, along with everything else that the church has received in the post. But we do spend a lot of time. So, so do have a read, do share it among, do share those copies amongst the fellowship. And yes, they're all always available digitally. It's, it's just to know that um, it, it's being proactive in wanting to belong to this wider expression of, of God's church. Um, and not to just sort of see the union as a as a bit of a backup plan or as an insurance policy where for when things go wrong or they need to borrow some money or or need to have a sort of a pastoral conversation because there's a difficulty in the church of seeing it as a far more positive relationship where you are networked in with these thousands of churches thousands of people uh, and to be excited by that um the biggest one of the biggest sort of criticisms we have as a baptist is um we can all be doing lots of the same thing at the same time and we're all inventing the wheel over and over again. We really don't need to do that. And one of the ways in which you can not need to do that as a fellowship is to engage with some of the um, yeah, information that we have on there because yeah, it will save you so much time, money and effort. Um, yeah, you use it really positively. That's brilliant. And uh, Mike, I want to thank you on behalf of the South Wales Association of Churches for uh, one, doing this uh, conversation, but also all the resources and how you're equipping us as, as a regional team uh, and as local churches. Thank you. Thank you.